thankful for the opportunity to communicate the word of God today. Hey, we're going to get into it. And you say, where are they? They're in our, they're in our start class right now. And we have about 20 people joining the Rust City family. Come on. Church is growing. Man, that's so awesome. And so, hey, if you want to be at that start class, our next one is June 9th. Well, I'm ready to get into the word. Y'all ready? Oh, you guys are more spiritual than that 9 o'clock service. I love it. I'm excited for the word. Today, our series is on overflow. Somebody say overflow. And the title of the message is Grace of Giving. Somebody say Grace of Giving. We need grace for the race. Come on, we need grace for the children that we are, we're raising, some of us, or our grandchildren, or our nieces and our nephew. We need grace for our mother and father. We need grace for our mother-in-law and father-in-law. Can I get in? We need grace for our job. We need grace for our boss. We need grace. Come on, somebody. We need grace for the way people drive or the lack of their driving at that stoplight scrolling on their phone and you're just trying to get to your destination. Come on, we need grace for for our our coworkers. We come on, we need a lot of grace, right? But today we're talking about the grace of giving cuz we need grace in this area of giving. And I just just everybody take a deep breath. It's all good. We've already received the offering. This is not a message to receive an offering. This is a message of not taking something from you but getting something to you. So I want, I want to, uh, the next few moments, share a few scriptures. And, you know, uh, our ultimate purpose of life is to make a difference with our life. Our ultimate purpose should not be to spend money. Our ultimate purpose should not be to vacation. It's okay to vacation, y'all. Our ultimate purpose should not be just to be successful. Nothing wrong with being successful. But our ultimate purpose on this earth, the reason why God formed us and the reason why God put us on this earth is to make a difference. Can I get an amen in the room? And so how important it is for us to to, um, put that in front of us because if we're not careful, the culture can really push us to try to keep up with the Joneses, to try to keep up with everybody else. You go on Instagram and you're overwhelmed by what everybody else is doing and feel like you need to do something. No, you need to have grace for your race. You need that. This is a word for somebody in the room. You need to have grace for what God's called you to do. Comparison is a destiny destroyer. If I keep looking over at what everybody else, don't look to the left or the right, but stay on your path of what God has for you to do. And your path is to make a difference. Somebody say, make a difference. Oh, okay. I I think I've lost y'all. Somebody say, make a difference. Let's try this again. Make a difference. difference. Okay, you're back with me. All right, I have a couple couple trivia questions for you. I want to see if you can guess this. This took a little while at 9 o'clock service. But if I show you this picture real quick, can y'all tell me what movie this is? Oh, my gosh. You guys are really spiritual in this place. Jerry Maguire. Y'all are so good. Okay. Does anybody remember the four famous words from the Jerry Maguire movie? Show me the money. For those that haven't seen it, now, y'all that know this movie, this is 27 years old, so y'all are old, all right? This is a long time ago. (laughs) I heard a thank you in the room. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for reminding me, Mark. Gosh. Show me the money. This, this is, this is uh, just a recap, just to bring you back. If you haven't, haven't seen this or, or if you haven't seen it in a long time, obviously, uh, the, in the movie, Rod Tidwell is this wide receiver, and he's kind of testing his agent, Jerry Maguire, and he, he starts to tell him, I need you to say, show me the money. And so, you know, he, Jerry Maguire is yelling with all his coworkers everywhere, show me the money, as loud as can be. It's the funny part of the movie. But Rod Tidwell is actually testing to see the values of Jerry Maguire. He wanted to see if his values lined up with Jerry's values. He was valuing money. But he was saying, I want a good contract, and if you're willing to get crazy on the phone with me, I know you'll be crazy enough to get me the right contract. 
And I want to say when it comes to giving, God's not really caring so much about what you're giving him as much as he's caring about your heart. He's not looking at your hand. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at do you value him? Is he number one in your life? If you study the Old Testament, the, the Old Testament, uh, the, the children of Israel kept getting things wrong because they kept putting things before God. They put sports before God. There was a God of sports in the Old Testament, right? The, 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 I'm going to bring it, break it down to you. There's all kinds of gods that there were in the Old Testament and different gods of distractions, and they were worshiping other gods. There's the same gods today in the United States. Their distraction, it's the vacation God. It's the success God. It's the, see, God's okay with you having success as long as success doesn't have you. God's okay with you having money as long as money doesn't have you. God's okay with you having sports as long as sports doesn't have you. He's okay with you having fun. He's, he wants you to live a blessed life. He just wants to be the center of your life. So if he's going to be the center of your life, you have to value him, and he has to be number one in your life, and you have to put God first in your life, in every area of your life. And so he's looking, and he's testing, and he's challenging the children of Israel all through the Old, Old Testament. He's looking to see, am I number one? Because if I'm number two, he, that's the idolatry. That's putting uh, other things before God. Now, you can't, now, again, you can't put your family before God. God has to be number one. See, if you want to be a blessing to your family, you have to get things in organiz organization, and you have to put things in order. And when you put first things first and God is first in your life, then you can be your authentic self the way that God's created you, the best version of yourself, to be a blessing to your family. See, if, if, if your parenthood, I don't know who this is. This was not in last, this is not in last, uh, message I just did, but if your parenthood, so this might be for somebody, if your parenthood is more important than God, then God can't bless your parenthood. God wants you, your grandparenthood, right? If, 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 if your grandchildren are more important than God, then he, he can't bless you to be the grandparent that you are called and anointed for such a time as this to be in this season of their life. So he's looking for him is looking for us to put him number one. When I give, I'm showing God that I value him. I'm showing him that I value him, that he's important to me. So what I want to do the next few moments is I want to read some scripture. And it's going to be about 12 verses. Everybody take a deep breath. It's all good. 12 verses. You know, I was in a small group. Uh, many, many, uh, this is like a couple years ago. I'm in this small group. And I get into a small group. It's the first group, and everybody's sharing their ideas about God. And it was so funny. It, I just, I, I began to almost chuckle and laugh because it sounded like a Looney Tunes, Disney, Paramount movie altogether. Everybody was giving ideas about God, and nobody was talking about what the Bible says. Everybody's like, well, I just believe this, and I just believe this. And I was like, cool, cool. Where is that in the Bible? Well, I heard this preacher one time. We have to know the Bible for ourselves. We have to know what the Bible says. And if the Bible says it and I could back it up, great. If not, then uh, maybe I just had too much pizza last night. And I just got a weird idea. So let's go to what the Word says. Is that all right? Okay. All right. Three of you. That's great. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now, you say, how are we going to get through this? I, I, I've, got, I've got things to do. It's a beautiful day out. How are you going to get me out on time? Well, I am. I used to be a professional rapper, so I can do this and speak it quickly. So if you can, if you can listen quickly, then we can get through this, all right? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. For even during the season of severe difficulty... Tremendous suffering, extreme poverty, their super abundant joy overflowed. Pause. They had difficulty, they had suffering, they had poverty, and still had joy. Wait a minute. They had difficulty, they were in a recession, the economy was messed up. Uh, they, 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 had, they had all this difficulty and challenge, and they had... Uh, Tremendous suffering, not just suffering, tremendous suffering, not just poverty. They describe it extreme poverty, but they had a super abundant joy 
overflowing. Wait a second. That means that I can't buy my happiness? Oh, I can't. I can't. You think if God would just give me $1,000, if God would just give me this, if God would just give me that, God, God's just saying, if you would just learn to, to, to embrace me through the struggle and make me number one in your life, you'll have more joy than if I just give you what you want. Wow, he's saying, now look at this. It's actually talking about their giving. He says, in extreme poverty, their super abundant joy overflowed in the act of extravagant generosity. So even though the circumstances were tough, they were generous. Even though they, they, they've been laid off, different things are happening, prices are going up, all these things are happening, taxes and unexpected bills are happening, there's extreme poverty, there's a super abundant joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Overflow with the act of extravagant generosity. They're urgently pleading with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Verse 5, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, then by the will of God able to us. So what is this teaching us right here? That when I give my offering or give my tithe to the church, I'm first giving it to God. So it's going to God. There's actually, we'll see in heaven, there's a book of works. This is in the scripture. It actually talks about there's a book of works of everything we did and didn't do. Y'all pray for each other. Pray for us, all right? But in that book of works, it's all of our giving is documented. And, he, and God is recognizing our giving, right? And he's saying I, they gave themselves first to all that. So, so we're giving it all to God. We're giving it to God, not man. We're giving it to God, not man. We're giving it to God, not man. But after that, when it goes into the church and the church receives it, it's to fulfill the will of God. The Apostle Paul, who almost wrote three-fourths of the New Testament, is explaining this in the Scripture, saying it goes to God first, but it also helps fulfill Rust City mission of helping people forget religion, find God, and move towards a new possible. So, so it's saying all this, but it's also saying to us that our values are going to determine our priorities. If we value it's going to determine what our priorities. We realize this, you know, I hear all the testimonies of people that have been through financial freedom through Pastor Doug. By the way, if you are trying to get out of debt or you're trying to get things in order in your finances, plug for that. That uh, uh, It's in our Rust City University. It starts on Tuesday nights in June. You want to be a part of that. But people come in through that and they say, I can't believe I'm spending so much money on things I don't value. Wow. So when you start to write down and look at all your budget, you're saying, wait a minute. I don't value this over God. And you find a way to put things first to what you truly value. So verse 6, let's move on. So we urge Titus, just as he early made a beginning, to bring also the completion, this act of grace on your part. That's where the scripture says. Verse 7. But since you excel in everything, somebody say everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in love, we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in the grace of giving. Not being stingy, but giving, living a lifestyle of giving. I don't know if you ever heard of Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts University. It's in Oklahoma. Oral Roberts was an incredible man of God, did a lot of great things for God. I, I actually spent some time with his son, and his son would ex was sharing with me all the things that Oral Roberts did. But Oral Roberts made this, this uh, commitment to God that every day he would give something. That every day he lived a life of giving. He lived to give. He I actually talk about stories where he felt like he didn't give enough that day. And he would grab some coins and actually go to parking meters and start giving to people in the parking, give into the parking meters, put more time in the parking meters because he wanted to live to give. He knew that there was something significant about giving to God. That we give to God, he blesses our life. And he blesses us and we're to live to give. We're not live to gain. We're not, li we're not to live to try to be successful. No, no, no. We are going to put our priorities first and say, God, how would you like me to give 
to each other today. How can I be a blessing? God, you have blessed me to be a blessing. Also, the world's mindset is really like, how can we stack it up? How can we gain it? The world's mindset sometimes even talks against people that actually are blessed. How dare you be successful in your business? Right? I hear this all the time. You should. We're not in the church not trying to shame people or guilt people to give. That's crazy. In fact, when someone comes up to receive the offering or when we're talking about money or talking about giving, we're trying to get the shame off you, not on you. We're trying to get the guilt off you. We don't want you to live in guilt. We don't want you to live in, in, in feeling forced like you have to or, or, or never want to feel pressure or manipulation. I've experienced that through the years in church where I was like, yeah, that's not my church and I don't want to be a part of that. Because you know why? It's not biblical. If the Bible says it, let's roll with it. Well, let's talk about what the Bible says. Now look, here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10. Uh, before I read this, I, I want to share this quick story with you. I was, we were, I was listening to a podcast where a pastor was, was talking about how he had got some new people in the church. And he, and he was so excited about this new family. And he was like, man, I'm so excited. They just, they just so, they're influencers. They're going to be great. They're a great fit for our church. And so he's sharing about it. And, and then uh, the next time he's with a group of pastors, he came back discouraged and said, I love that family. But they came to me and told me that they don't feel like they have to give their tithe. They don't have to give. And he said, I was so discouraged by them. And another pastor jumped up in the conversation and said, hey, bro. They're right. They don't have to give. It's actually biblical that they don't have to give. Y'all want to hear it? I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to show you what the Apostle Paul says about this. Because it's, this is really important that we put weight on what God's word says and not what other people's opinions say. Mic drop right there. I just said something. Right, because this world is all about gimme, gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Right? Wicca, wicca. Right? <laughs> Right? This world's all about what can I gain? What can, how can it, but, but, but the kingdom of God in the church, it should be, God, what can I do for you? Look what it says in verse 10. And here is my judgment about what's best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first and not only to give, but you also have the desire to. Have the desire to. Wow. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness, somebody say willingness, to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. Verse 12, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable. Wait a second. So if I give out of compulsion, or I give because I feel like I have to, or I give because I'm, oh, God, they just don't want to hear about this anymore. Here, here's the money. If I give that way, God can't receive it. God doesn't accept it. It's not acceptable to God because I don't have the posture or the position. This new family that was going to that church was, was saying, I don't have to give. And the pastor responded. The other pastor was, that was mentoring this pastor said, hey, they, that's right. They don't have to give. We don't want them to feel like they have to give. In fact, we want them to fall in love with Jesus that they can't help but give. See, the motivation, my internal motivation is, is so important. Rather than an external obligation, I need to have the internal right motivation. So it doesn't go to, uh, I have to do this, but I get to do this. Now, some of you know, I, I moved here about a year ago. And we, in St. Louis, from St. Louis, I had, I had a, uh, uh, a sister-in-law and a brother-in-law. And that was about all the family I had in St. Louis. Now, I moved here. My, my wife grew up in Youngstown. She is Italian and Greek, and she, we have, like, seriously, 99, she has 99 cousins. There's probably a cousin in this room right now, so y'all pray for me that I'll mess this up or get myself in trouble, all right? But, but so things are big and different here for me. Well, my, since I've been living with my mother-in-law, I've been finding this trend that keeps happening, and everywhere I go, like, I'll go to her house, and she has things for, she's bought things for me. She, she's Italian, and so she keeps buying me food. But it's specific food, the things that she knows I like. I don't ask for it. She just gives it to me. 
And then I come, uh, then she comes to my house, and she's bringing me my favorite chips, and she's bringing me. I was out of town last week, and she came to the house, and I, when I got home, I had a bunch of snacks. And my, my wife said, yeah, mom brought these over. And I'm like, this woman keeps giving me stuff, and I'm so blown away by it. I'm like, if I was her grandson, that makes sense. Or if, if I was her own flesh and blood, that makes sense. But I'm just the son-in-law. And I started thinking, this woman is going to a grocery store and thinking about me. I'm so blessed by that. I'm thinking about it. That's the attitude that you and I should have every single day. God, you're so good. What can I do for you? God, you have been so graceful. You have been so incredible. And rather than focusing on my problems, did you see that scripture where it said they had extreme poverty? They had extreme pressure. There were all these things. All hell was coming against them. But they had such joy. That's, that's proving to us that finances don't solve things. That's proven to us that transformation doesn't come from money. No, 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 no. Uh, Dion, I heard Dion Sanders say that he was living in a mansion alone and depressed with all kinds of cars he could drive. He's, he's battling suicide. Wow, because money does not solve those things. No, it comes from having a relationship with Jesus, having an encounter with God. And what happens is, is now when I have the right motivation because of how good, how great, how miraculous, how wonderful our God is, now I'm having this perspective and this attitude and this mindset that, God, you are so good that I can trust you with everything. God will give it to me if God God can give it through me. I was out of town. I ran into somebody that I knew. I heard that there was a struggle. He didn't know I knew the struggle. And I gave him a Pentecostal handshake. Y'all know what that is? That's just money in their hand, right? It's Pentecostal Sunday, so I thought I'd throw that out there, right? They're like, these pe- we're non-denominational, y'all. Just relax. Everybody take a breath. The Baptists are getting frustrated right now. All right, everybody, it's all good. God loves the Baptists, the Methodists, everybody, all right? But the truth is, is here, is as I give him, I, I, I slip him this money, and I'm like, be blessed. Why? Because I live to give. I don't live to gain. And I'm more blessed to give than receive. So the blessing of God is opening the door in my life because of it. So I want to give you real quick three things, real fast, three things that we can do to apply and things that, that reveal we have the grace of giving. Am I helping anybody? Are y'all bored? Are you scrolling on IG? Okay, y'all, uh, y'all here. Okay, all right. Awesome, all right. Three ways we walk in the grace of giving. Number one, when I'm grateful, not guilty. When I'm grateful, not guilty. Oh, I love this right here. Because if I have a grateful heart, God, God will begin to work in my life. Rather than thinking about what I don't have, I'm thinking about what God's given me, what God's blessed me. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. And because I'm grateful, I don't feel the guilty pressure that I have to do it. I want to do it. There's a difference, right? Look what, look what David said. I'm going to skip through. I think this is verse 12. It says, wealth and honor come from you. So next time someone gets mad at you for being blessed, you could tell them to go read the Bible. Because wealth and honor comes from him. God wants you to be blessed. God doesn't want you to be struggling. God wants you to be blessed, but you will go through struggles. And he's pruning you and helping you and equipping you through this. But God does want you to be blessed. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks. Praise and praise your glorious name. Now, David says this. He's the king of this nation. And he says, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from our hand. What he's saying is, is God, I'm not worthy, but I want to show you that you are worthy. God, I can't help but tithe. I can't help but give. I can't help but, God, I want to, and I'm, no one's pressuring me. David, in front of the entire nation, was the first to give to God. David actually said this, I'm tired of us building our home, own homes. Let's build God a home and let God's home look better than our homes. God's okay if you have a house. He just doesn't want the house to have you and for you to hold back, for him to using and working through you in your finances. So number one, when I'm grateful, not guilty. 
Number two, when I love people the way that God does. Whoa. When I love people the way that God does. Acts 2, four, verse 42, everything was filled with awe. Look at this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I told you I'm a rapper. I could do this fast. Everyone was filled with awe at the many signs and wonders. You know what awe means? It actually means the fear of God. We think the fear of God like he could snatch us and take us off this earth. But the fear of God is, God, I fear you and I love you and I'm in awe of you because you're so good. Because you're so great. Because you have blessed my life. Because I should have died in that accident, but you rescued me. I should have died from that disease, but you rescued me. God, you've given me grace today. You've given me breath and lungs. God, you've, you gave me transfer, transportation to get to this place today. God, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Wow. We're filled with awe that was performed and what God did through the apostles. All the believers were together and everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. What? So when I love people the way God does. So first, when I'm grateful, not guilty. Somebody say the grace of giving. Come on, say the grace of giving. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. I want to walk in the grace of giving. It's through grateful, not guilty, when I love people the way that God does. And number three, as I'm closing, when I fall in love with Jesus. If you're having a hard time giving, spend more time not focusing on the giving part, but on the giver that gave you life and life more abundantly. Think about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he what? He didn't take, he gave. So all I'm doing is emulating the, my creator. All I'm doing is tapping into the grace that God has for my race. He's in that grace of giving to bless others, to be a blessing. Did I help anybody this morning? Come on, can we just give God some praise for his word? Can I pray for you? Father, I thank you for Rust City Church, the calling, the anointing, the power the gifts, God, that you have for us, God. And God, we just are so grateful. We're so thankful. We're so humbled that you would love us, that you would touch us, that you would save us, that you would redeem us, that you would restore us. God, we're grateful for how good you are. God, we repent right now. If, if we have put other things before you, God, we put you first in our life. God, we seek you first, and all those things will be added unto us. God, we repent if we've been focused too much on the bills or too much on the finances or the pressure or the debt. And we know that, God, you love us, and you are for us. And, God, you are teaching us and training us and equipping us. God, for this season and this time, God, help us to put you first in every area of our life. God, let our motivation be right before you, God. So that when we give, God, we want you to receive it, God. We want our life to be blessed, our family to be blessed, our mind, our health to be blessed. God, touch your people today, God. Let us not just hear the word, but be doers of the word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, can we just give God some praise?